Please welcome two great actors, Eva Marie Saint and Don Murray. Now I know what 
it's like to be a movie star. You, you're impervious to all insults <laughs> and in out of an awkward. And just at this time, Buddy Adler came on, on the set. He came up to me and he said, I just bought a play for you. And I said, well, what play? He said, I had Full of Rain. And I had seen it on Broadway. And I said, no, that's just great. But what he didn't know is that that play was not probably not, not going to be for me because the people at the studio had seen the rushes and they all agreed that I was just god off in the park. That they said that I was too big, too loud, especially with this kinescope, a big screen like this, and that they're going to have to fire me and, and, and uh, get somebody else to play the part. Um, Who said that? Everybody at the studio <laughs> said that. That was about bus stop, not this bus stop. Everybody at the studio said what he had there. But anyway, so uh, they weren't going to pick up my, uh, my contract, my uh, option for the contract. And then bus stop opened. And then everything just the opposite happened. Was, of course, as you know, they did. You know, I was nominated for an Academy Award and so on. So anyway, then it became a reality. And they asked, offered me the part, but it was to play polo, not to play John, because they thought I was a comedian now and, and I should play the part that's the well, I love both of you. <laughs> well, I said, I, I, I said, well, I, I met with Zinman, and Zinman said, I think you're a wonderful polo. I said, I don't want to play polo, I'm going to play Johnny. He said, well, why? Everybody th thinks you're going to play the comedy part. I said, I know, that's why I want to play the comedy part. <laughs> well, anyway, I think that that is the best thing I did for the film, like that decision, because it gave Tony Francioso the opportunity to play the part. And you saw it tonight. Tony Franciosa and Henry Silva were the only carryovers from the stage production. Everybody else yes, knew. Right. knew. Yeah. But Anthony Franciosa was Oscar nominated for Best Actor. But you two were robbed. You should have been Best Actress and Best Actor. Well, and everybody they don't want to go back. The, the, press was, <laughs> the, the press was talking about you, Marika. She had won the Oscar, you know, for On the Waterfront. And uh, most of the press were saying that she was going to win the best actress for this. Uh, and I think she deserved it. I don't think there was any performance in that, in that one. Uh, but Tony Francioso uh, was nominated for this. And also, he won the Best Actor Award at the Venice Film Festival for having the right. So, uh, any accolades that were given to anybody uh, were, were given deservedly so to, to Anthony. And I'm uh, sure you saw that tonight. He was, he was wonderful. Now, now, his wife Rita happens to be here. We can't yes. afford it. So, so he's got to be here. He's so much. Let everybody do a comment to you. It's a real pleasure.
I was in a New York apartment, similar with my husband. He's still here. Do you want to stand up, Jeff? <laughs> no, we stand up. Yeah, we you know that Jeffrey Hayden and Eva Marie Saint are celebrating their 60th anniversary this year. And I still love him. Sounds like a lot of you were watching uh, last week. Uh, I'm aware of what was on, and Eva Marie was just incredible on that. That's why she was in, uh, won the Academy Award for it. And, uh, she just knocked me out and she tore my heart out now, just like she did in this one. Uh, when I watch this one, the, one that, the ones that I get emotional about are, are uh, Eva's part, the wife and, and the brother, because they're the ones that lives are being torn apart, you know, they're, they're completely different. And it is, I feel certain sympathy for Johnny because he got his addiction uh, from his service and being, uh, being captured and being tortured. Uh, but most of my sympathy, sympathy was with uh, the brother and, and the wife. Uh, we did a study, friends and I, uh, of a month before we started on this in New York, and we were in, uh, in jails and uh, on the streets and the doctor's offices and uh, just uh, talking to junkies and trying to understand them and trying to, and of course, observing what they went through, which is all the withdrawal symptoms. That's what I saw. But even back then, my greatest sympathy was not for them, it was for the people who they, they hurt, who, the lives that they destroyed around them. Uh, and, uh, and most of them, they never expressed any, well, back to everyone, uh, they never expressed any uh, kind of regrets about the, the people they were hurting. It was all about their own pain. And so when I watch this film, uh, what makes me emotional is uh, Eva Marie and Tom, everyone's there. Yeah. And the, the fact that she that she accepted it, I don't think that's true of all families. And it has to be a very difficult uh, situation. Um, so that's where I think it could be inspiring for audiences if they if they brought it back. Anyone who has someone in the family addicted to have that feeling that they need care and that they're not to be discarded. And they're just so you know just so many. People who now, you know, at that time, everybody thought drummers were on something. <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> oh, that it was the drummer, the drummer in the band. Oh, he's, you know, he's got to be on something to be that fast. And be, uh, but now, I mean, that was the cliche, actually. So now Part of what's, what's uh, impressive about the film is that the characters you play and your persona as actors you wouldn't associate Johnny or Celia with drugs. And I think that's part of the impact that the film has, is that clean characters get involved in drugs. It's, it's a surprising connection. They're not the characters you would expect. So the casting is so right for that, because it's sort of against, against what we would expect of Yeah, and I was really Nolan was so wonderful. Yeah, you were. Wasn't he? Oh. And he really was the father of those two crazy boys, yeah. and but the love of the family, and, and he comes to town, and, and all hell breaks loose, you know, and, 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 and he, you know, he tried to be understanding, but he was, he was, he was the father, you know, he was the father, it was very difficult for him to think that he raised a boy who was an addict, um, it was different from Celia, she's carrying the baby, I reread the script, uh, the, 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 I re recently reread the, the uh, play, the, the movie, and when she goes to the hospital, I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope she doesn't lose the baby. <laughs> but but that was a long it's time. part of, of the, the surprise of the film about how strangers sometimes are, people in families don't know each other very well. The father misreads the son, you misread your husband, and the father says you were with him and you didn't know that there's, uh, there's a gap in this family. They're in some way strangers to each other. And she was very jealous, and that's, very, that's really very understandable in the film. He didn't come home at night. Um, they had a good relationship, and, uh, and suddenly they didn't. So she, she had to be suspicious. It's a very female thing, reaction. 
all those in the audience who have had that, raise your hand. <laughs> oh, one. <laughs> no, it's very, it's very female uh, reaction. Is, is it possible to you, was it possible to you, that your character would accept his addiction almost as soon as he says it? She makes a very quick adjustment. I think she was so relieved that it wasn't another woman. <laughs> I'm serious about that. I think that she really was relieved because, wish you can laugh, go ahead. <laughs> there are a few laughs in this film. But I think she was relieved, even if she didn't know that she could handle it, she knew that he was still in love with her, that she was the mother of their baby, going to be the mother of their baby. And I think, I think that it was, uh, in a strange way, it was a relief, and she's a very practical lady. She's on that phone, she called the police, and she hopes there'll be help for him. But, it, but it's not certain that there's a happy ending. Yes, there's a hanging a bit. Oh, let it hang. He's going to get better. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, John? And, 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 and make this good, huh? <laughs> I want a happy ending. <laughs> how, how long does it take?
Uh, he was very but sweet. He worked with, he directed Brando in his first film, and Montgomery Clift in his first film. Mm -hmm. Did he understand the method? Oh yeah, he was an actor's, he was an actor's director. Whether he were from his studio or not from his studio, he would just get these wonderful performances from the actors. You felt very secure with him. You had such respect for him. And it was, it was just a joy. It was a joy to be with him. It was a joy to go on that set. The story wasn't joyful, <laughs> but uh, you could, uh, I know it was just a, a wonderful experience. But by God, it's a sad set. I mean, I, the movie. I really have a stomach ache sitting here. I mean, it, it just it just hits you, doesn't it? It really it hits does. You play it now. It hits me watching it. Do you know why, after all these years, the film has sort of gone into this limbo? It's not seen. It's not I available. wish you'd find out. I've been working with Robert Osborne turning classic movies, and I'm going to ask him because he knows everything about every film. And, and, or you can do your homework. Um, I, I, oh, yes, yeah. but, but you know a lot about Is there me. some contractual thing with Fox? Is it something? Be. There, there, may, there may be. But I mean, I had a cassette, and now I can't find it. I am determined to find it in my library. But, um, but how I, much, so, how much was shot on the I was ask how much I made. No. How much was shot on location, and how much was shot at Fox? Do you recall? Most, mostly on. Mostly on location. It was mostly. Uh, well, the interiors, just those interiors. Or even the bar that was shot on location. On location, but the yeah, apartment the, was. The, the apartment was, was the only thing. So, on the outside. Yeah. From uh, yeah. yeah. So we, we were actually for a longer time in New York City than we were uh, there. Is that so, oh, yeah. Which okay. came first? You shot all the New York scenes yeah, together, yeah. surely. Yeah. That yeah. come before the interiors, or yes, it did. Do you remember the first day we went with Fred in that apartment house? No, I don't remember. Oh my God! <laughs> I don't remember when we you were with me. We <laughs> had our at our apartment house. Well, I, <laughs> I guess you were with me. Maybe maybe I was alone. I don't know. But anyway, it, I did see that apartment house, and uh, we, my husband and I were from New York, and I thought oh, it, it just seemed the right place that they would live in that apartment house. But as Don said, the sets were, the, the, our interiors were on the set. Because you could see they pulled the walls away and put the camera at a certain place. What were, were the you watching that? Doing? Yes, I was. <laughs> what were the That's zebras doing? What were the zebras doing? Did you notice the actress? No, I was watching Don Murray. <laughs> but you have a lot of relationships with objects in this film. You're working this film. Oh, I love that. Yeah, the kitchen. And yes. See, that was all very important. How she, how she, and she just did it automatically, as we all do, you know, in our kitchens. And uh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted you to feel that that was her apartment, and she was proud of it. She kept it clean. She kept the laundry clean. She couldn't make coffee. She never learned how to make that coffee. That was the only bit of humor in that whole movie. <laughs> uh, I, one thing that uh, I was reminded here is that both in this film and in uh, On a Waterfront, is Eve Marie uh, never played a part uh, as just a victim. She always was a force. She was only a force that was not just being moved by instance, but moving instance as well. As you see the urgency that she plays that part in auto, on the waterfront and the power that she has. And she had even the same thing uh, in, in this film. You never felt that this, this was, she just didn't know what was happening. But you never felt that this was, at least I don't feel emotion, this wasn't somebody that just let themselves be a victim. Somebody had that strength all the way through it. Uh, and Absolutely. the strength that she showed of resisting the brother, and, and the strength yeah. she showed so of you know, <laughs> just taking over the strength that she showed in the thing. Absolutely. Of, okay, you, you've done your part, now I'm the right one to take care of it. Yeah. And Eve Marie has that quality. And you feel at the end that she will have the strength to see it through it. Definitely. That was an interesting relationship between Polo and Johnny and she in the middle. And at the point where she really felt that there had to be that other woman, 
and that he really didn't love her anymore. He wasn't getting any attention. You could see why she, why she would, why Bobo began to look better and better. <laughs> so it all happened at the, you know, at the right time because God knows what could have happened, would have happened. Was it, it didn't happen. Was it difficult for Celia to reject Bobo? No, not really. She really had this love for, for Johnny. I just felt that was an incredible love, and I think out of such frustration, such disappointment, such unhappiness, that, I mean, he was right there. I mean, it could have been just another guy, but it was Polo. It was Polo. Oh, she was, cared for him, but she loved Johnny. She, yes, yes, yes. But I never felt that it could have gone that way, and he was, he was so wonderful with her, because he, you know, that was a complicated relationship, his relationship with her. He knew what was happening. He knew everything. Yeah. He was the one character in the life. Right. I wanted to ask you about Henry Silva, whom we were hoping was going to come tonight. Um, oh. But he wasn't quite feeling up, but he's magnificent and scary. Praise that mother. Part. Mm -hmm. mother, the ironically named mother. What's the connection between Henry Silva in that part, and what was he like in the real world? He was mother, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sweet, wonderful. I recently saw him at the actor's studio out here, and I hadn't seen him in so many years. He kind of looks the same, and he was such a menacing character. But when, when, whatever he did, he was he was a good actor. No, he wasn't like that. He just he was such a good actor. You believe it? You wanted me to say yes, yes. No, no, I know you wouldn't say yes, but he was very scary. He was kind of innocent. Yeah, He's very, very boyish kind of a guy. Very. Very, very, uh, you know, you, you think of as a, a hot shucks country boy. Be a... before, before, before we throw open questions to the house, I just, there are a few people I want to introduce. I do want to introduce your husband, who's had a you long do it again. and distinguished career. He's directed for every television series practically in the last 50 years and lots of stage work, Mr. Jeffrey Hayden.
Cecilia Johnson, Usina. That's just a wonderful story. Uh, you will see. I'm not going to tell you that. It, it, but it's, I just love her performance. You know? There's a man and a wife, and they're married, and she kind of goes off and meets somebody. But then she comes home, and he knows what I'm telling you the whole thing now. But he comes home, and you know, you don't know whether he knows, but he's just reading the paper, and she comes home. He says, hi, honey. We'll go see the film. you about bus stop. Um, how what you were both at such a peak at that time? How was it working with Marilyn Monroe? Is it something that was difficult for you? Or it was. It was. How was it working with Marilyn Monroe? It was actually very difficult. Uh, uh, Avery Saint is the unmarried. <laughs> <laughs> 